what you've been doing. Busy little bee, or I shall strike down those dearest to you. Characters on a page are just that. They're an assortment of loose ideas, dialogue, and plot necessities. It's only when an actor is cast and the performance given that the character is truly formed and brought to life. In the case of Gladiator, Joaquin Phoenix delivered a performance that balanced delusion and a desperation to be loved so powerful that it redefined what we think of as a villain. Striking story. Now that people want to know how the story ends, what could be more glorious than to challenge the Emperor himself in the great arena? Released in 2000, Gladiator was a loving homage to the traditional swords and sandals films of old Hollywood like Ben-Hur or Spartacus. Director Ridley Scott wondered what a version of those films would look like in a modern film landscape. And uh, we haven't seen that, and certainly not with the technology we can employ today where we can do all kinds of things and, you know, really do an epic in the grand sense of the word. Based on the book Those About to Die by Daniel P. Mannix, the story was a fictionalized retelling of the rise and fall of Emperor Commodus, played by Joaquin Phoenix, during what most historians consider the last leg of the Roman Empire. Key to the fall was General Gladiator Maximus Decimus Meridius, played by Russell Crowe. The decision to cast Crow was due partly to his turn in LA Confidential, however the casting of Joaquin Phoenix as Commodus was Scott's decision and instinct alone. At the time, Phoenix had already established himself as an interesting character actor. Phoenix had started as a child actor, before stopping after he felt he wasn't being offered interesting roles. At the behest of his older brother, River, Joaquin returned to acting in Gus Van Sant's cult classic, To Die For. From there, he seemed to revel in the strange and dark. For Commodus, Phoenix built a hodgepodge of characteristics from those characters into a fully realized Roman emperor. Commodus is a leader who wants to instill both love and fear in his people. When he finds out his father, Marcus Aurelius, wants to appoint General Maximus as his successor in order to veer the Roman Empire towards a Roman Republic, it breaks Commodus' heart. Not just because he wants to rule so badly, but because he wants his father to believe he is worthy to rule. When Marcus falls to his knees in front of Commodus in a desperate attempt to show his son that the failings he sees are not the fault of Commodus, but himself as a father, the boy weeps. All I've ever wanted was to live up to Caesar, father. Phoenix delivers a performance in this moment that could have veered into melodramatic cartoonishness in lesser hands. But Phoenix knows that an understated moment will hit us so much harder. You wrote to me once, listing the four chief virtues. But none of my virtues won your list. Oh, Commodus. Even then it was as if you didn't want me for your son. It's such an earnest exclamation where we witness what is clearly intended to be a tragic moment between the two. We aren't just watching a political coup. We're watching a son expose their heart to their father. Phoenix knows that this is what makes not just the scene, but the character work. Through that heartbreak, we see Commodus remember what he believes his greatest virtue is. But I have other virtues, father. Ambition. While Commodus wants to rule, he also wants his father to believe he can rule. When he realizes Marcus doesn't, his simply prioritized thirst to be emperor takes over. Instead of a violent strangle, Commodus pulls the Emperor to his breast and doesn't let go until the man is dead. It's hard to watch, and Phoenix knows it. This warping of a familiar gesture, this gentle yet horrific dispatch, is exactly what makes the villain so unhinged. Especially when we recall a moment earlier when he said, One kind word. One full hug. Will you breast me to your chest and help me die? This use of language to foreshadow violence, to turn his interpretations of moments and feelings into brutality is a trait Phoenix is also able to carry through brief physical moments. After watching Maximus, then a nameless gladiator who has won the heart of the people Commodus so desperately wants, the Emperor walks onto the Colosseum ground and accepts the crowd's applause like it was his own. Phoenix walks a tightrope along the spectrum of emotions. After Maximus delivers his now famous declaration of identity, my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. We see Phoenix's lip quiver as he stares in awe at the man he feels has taken so much from him. It's a small moment, one that seems out of genuine fear that quickly turns to anger and a small inaudible order to his guards. But again, Phoenix never goes full hog. 
but if Phoenix had veered too hard into a wailing madman, we never would have gotten the superb moment of Commodus meekly putting a finger over his lips in a vain attempt to hush the crowd. As Phoenix sheepishly looks to the audience in hopes of an approval, what he thought would be a round of applause for him ends up being the people rallying around Maximus. The fact that it's for Maximus, an echo of his father's favoritism, just drives home Commodus's insecurity, an inner feeling that he is not good enough, not for his father and not for the people he desperately wants to rule, and Phoenix taps into that feeling throughout the movie. He plays the role with the air of a small child playing dress up. Everything he wears is slightly oversized, Throughout the movie, Phoenix's posture is always forced. Not with a sense of confidence, but of someone that is desperate to stand shoulder to shoulder at the grown-up table. None of this is to say Phoenix never delivers full-on terrifying or intimidation. You will love me as I loved you. Desperate to begin a romantic relationship with his sister Lucilla, Commodus threatens her child and treats it as mercy. Should I be merciful? Commodus the merciful. It is a truly sickening scene, not just for the act of threatening his own nephew, but the idea that he truly believes he is showing them mercy. And Phoenix knew this was a moment he could truly show the darkness of Commodus. As he walks slowly to his crying sister, he asks her, Am I not merciful? When she stares ahead, saying nothing, Phoenix gently places his hand against her cheeks and shouts it louder. Am I not merciful? It was a sinister moment that showed he believed the vile acts he committed, we're good. When we do reach the film's climax and Commodus' last ditch effort to sway the crowd, Phoenix is spot on in posturing bravado. In Oliver Stone's 1997 film U-Turn, Phoenix played an overly confident troublemaker in love with his own persona as Toby TNT Tucker. Phoenix manages to tap into the sense of entitlement of the small town bully, and opposite Crow's rugged determination, it's a textbook example of investment without suspense. You take life when you have to. As I do. I have only one more life to take. Then it is done. Take it now. During the film's climactic scene, as Commodus finds himself unarmed, he demands a weapon. Phoenix sells this moment like few other actors would. He pendulums between anger and desperation with a look in his eyes that reflects the same betrayal he felt from his father. But because we love how much Phoenix put into the role, we can't help but also love the ride. On paper, Commodus could have been a one-dimensional tyrant, a maniacal madman who used his power to crush those beneath him until his inevitable comeuppance. Instead, Phoenix presented us with a thoughtful sociopath who would stop at nothing to prove himself no matter the consequences. Phoenix perfectly embodied a villain who wasn't terrifying or intimidating, but it is a villain all too important for us to forget. Through Phoenix's deft performance, we were reminded that the world can be filled with weak-willed cowards that stumble or force their way into power. So, what do you think? Who else has given such a memorable performance of such an unlikable character? Let us know down in the comments below, and as always, Thanks for watching.